Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I am Penge and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 where we rejoin Emperor Teapot who last time out struck a devastating blow to the heart of the Holy Roman Empire. As we can see right here, the Empire of Cupboard has kind of cleaved the Holy Roman Empire in two. It's been sliced right through the middle because last time out we finally got our hands on the Kingdom of Bohemia there. And that is wonderful. That was a wonderful thing. And it's really done two things. Number one is that it's given us yet another Kingdom title to add to the big collection of Kingdom titles that are now stacking up here in the Empire of Cupboard. And number two is that it surely started the clock ticking on the demise of the Holy Roman Empire. They've now only got one Kingdom title, I think. I think that's all they've got. The Kingdom of Frisia up here. And that is it. I mean, once they leave, if they break away, which they might well do, they might well do now they're sort of realising that the empire they're part of is not really worth being part of anymore. If they leave, then that's it. Surely, surely, if they go, the Holy Roman Empire is going to collapse like a biscuit that's been dunked into a cup of tea for far too long. And of course, last time we welcomed a new queen to the Cupboard Dynasty as well, because we went on a crusade with the Pope Squad against lots of nudie people, and we prevailed against the nudie people, presumably because they weren't wearing any armour on account of, you know, the nudiness and everything. And our granddaughter Bjorn Githir was rewarded with the title of the Queen of Jerusalem. And there she is there. There is the Queen of Jerusalem herself wearing her fancy crown. I mean, if I'm honest, the crown could be better. The crown could be better. There is room for improvement here. I mean, you know, you're wearing very nice things. It all looks very kind of regal, but the crown is a little bit lacklustre. It's got some shiny red bits on the side. They look okay. And it's got some kind of, you know, small pointy bits on the top. Maybe, maybe one of your first very important kind of queenly duties could be to go and get yourself a better crown. That would be quite nice, wouldn't it? That would be brilliant. But there we go. So we have ourselves a new queen as part of the dynasty. And the good thing about this is that because she is married matrilineally, all of her children are also of our dynasty, which is excellent. So hopefully the title of the Kingdom of Jerusalem will stick around with the cupboards for absolutely ages. However, right now we do have ourselves a couple of bits and bobs that we need to get sorted out. So unfortunately we have been dragged into a couple of wars. Now this is not ideal, it's not perfect, but it's Crusader Kings 3 and wars do happen. Yeah, they do happen occasionally. I don't know if you've noticed, but we've got these two wars here. This one, I'm not too bothered about at all. This one might be slightly trickier to resolve, but I think we'll be okay. I think we can muddle through with both of these fights and not have too much to worry about. I mean, they're more of a nuisance than anything else. They're more more of an inconvenience rather than a challenge but there we go never mind so what we're going to do is we're going to go away to an entirely different part of the world we're going to start something going and then we're going to come back and sort out these two wars here because emperor teapot has decided to turn his attention to the kingdom of sweden hello sweden how are you there so this is the kingdom of sweden the lovely independent kingdom of sweden and emperor teapot is now pretty sure that it's time that they joined the empire of cupboard I mean, they're here and it's fine and we don't have any real problem with them. They've never troubled us in the past. They've not really come to bother us. And I think we get on. Yeah, there we go. King Odd's opinion of us. So the King of Sweden's opinion of us is plus 100. I mean, that's quite a lot. That's quite big. But there we go. So yeah, he likes us. He's a big fan of us. He's very fond. But I think what we need to do is we need to show them the way. We need to bring them into the Empire of Cupboard and show them the way to make a really good cup of tea. The Cabordian way to make a cup of tea. The one true way to make a tea. Because they might make tea in a certain way in Sweden. Or they might not have tea at all. I do not know. But once they become part of the Empire of Cupboard, they will make tea the proper way. And it will change their lives forever. Oh, Sweden. Oh, Swedish people, you have an awful lot to look forward to. So what we need to do is we need to get a claim on the Kingdom of Sweden. Now, we did try this before, didn't we? We did try this before. We even went to war, I think, for Sweden. And whilst the war was going on, the person with the claim unfortunately passed away. So we were quite close to having Sweden under our control, but we didn't quite get there. So what we need to do is, do we have anybody with any claims right now? Because obviously there's no point fabricating and getting claims if we already have somebody with claims. But, ah, our armies are raised. Of course, yes. They're over here because they were fighting over here for the Kingdom of Bohemia. Right, okay. Now we do need some armies, but I think it's probably a better idea to just stand these guys down and then raise them up again over here rather than make them walk across most of Western Europe. I think that's probably the best idea. Right, you lot disband. So there we go, disband you. So now we should be able to go to here and see if anybody does have claims. Right, declare war, there we go. 
So does anybody have claims? We've not got that many people with claims on Sweden. We can't do forced vassalization. That would be perfect, but unfortunately, yes, he's got too many counties. So we can't do that. Um, this guy here has got a claim on that one place and Duke, <laughs> Duke Borkvard, which is a brilliant name. Oh, I like you, Duke Borkvard. And you've got a good beard as well. Um, yeah, you've got claims on a few bits, bit up there, bit up there, bit down there. But um, but no, nobody with like a you know, kingdom level claim. Okay, right, fine. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to go and have to do our sort of our lovely befriending thing. We're going to have to go and find a new buddy who does have a claim on the kingdom of Sweden. So here we are. We've got 12 people with claims on the kingdom of Sweden. So let's have a little look through. So we've got Anand Rikisasson, this chap here with the eye patch. Okay, so you are, you're 56. However, I do notice you're a drunkard. What's your health like? Your health is poor and you are ailing. That's not brilliant. That is not really very good at all. We don't want to obviously go to all the trouble of befriending someone and then getting them over to our court and then declaring war and spending all the prestige for them to just die whilst we're having a fight and then it all comes to nothing. We've been there. We've done that. We don't really want to do it again. So, okay. He's also not very good. He's not very good at all. He's quite sneaky. But other than that, he is a little bit rubbish. Okay, right. And then we've got this chap here. So unfortunately, yes, we have to ignore all the ladies, which is not ideal. But there we go. Right, you here. You are... Oh, you're the husband... Oh, you're the husband of a duchess. Okay, I think... Hang on. I think that means he's never going to go anywhere. Yeah, indeed. He's never going to join our court. So, okay, not him. Okay, you here. Alessandro that name there, this chappy here, he's a courtier of King Reprando. King Reprando is one of ours, is he not? He is our vassal and also our chancellor. Ah, okay, yes, okay, yeah, he's the king of Italy. Okay, this guy here, he seems okay. He does not seem too bad at all. He is, is he a knight? Is he that guy's knight? Hang on a minute, hang on, where can we find the thing out? Yeah, invite to court. So base reluctance minus 50. Uh, yeah, he likes us, plus 25. He also likes King Reprando, so that brings that back down by 15. And yeah, he is his liege's knight, minus 20. I don't think, even if we befriend him, I don't think that he will... I don't think he'll join our court, because he's got a job there. Even though we would like to make you the king of Sweden. <laughs> it's fine, you stay being a knight. I mean, it's a shame we can't, you know tell him that we can't go by the way we'd like you to come to our court to make you the king of sweden but there we go i mean he seems well he's better than the others okay so who have we who else is there scrolly scroll There's so many claimants but they're ladies and we can't use those claims um okay we've got down to kids so you're one you're four you're four. Oh no sorry i missed you out i missed you gustav Samundsen. okay you are a courtier of King Odd. You're an evil craven. Oh, brilliant. Well, that sounds promising, doesn't it? Um, you are diligent and craven. <laughs> diligent and craven and sadistic. Diligently craven. Yeah, you absolutely, you do not shy away from running off. Okay. Do we want to make you, do you want to make you the king of Sweden? I mean, you're a bit rubbish. Um, okay. Your opinion of the current king is not great. You don't have any jobs or anything with the current king. So... I mean, you are probably the most likely to succeed. I kind of want that guy. I want him because he's far better. He is far, far better than that guy there or the guy at the top with the eye patch. But I don't think he'll join. I really don't think he will join. I don't think we can. Uh, I don't think we can get him. I don't think get that sort of number there moved to a positive. It's already on minus sixty right now. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. I think we might have to go for let's see, this guy. I mean, he's okay. His stats are okay. His stats are sort of all right. I just don't like the fact that he's a, a diligent craven. Um, yeah, he's quite good at the fighting. He's terrible at diplomacy. Or that guy, who's a bit sneaky, but he's rubbish at everything else. No, it's going to be it's going to be this guy. It's going to be this guy. Let's go and be friends with you. Okay, so for a friend scheme, there we go. 100% success chance that um, that he might become our friend. Now, this is what I misunderstood previously. I thought it was a 100% it was a success chance that he will become our friend. But no, it just means that the scheme ends and then the game, I don't know, does some you know, invisible dice rolling in the background somewhere to determine whether we do become friends or not. So I guess what could happen is the scheme could fail entirely and that role never happens. There's no chance of us becoming friends. But this means that we will get that chance and it's going to take 10 months. 
So, okay, we'll do that. And then we'll, we'll pin you to the, to the pinny thing up there. Okay. So there we go. We'll start that ball rolling there. And now whilst we're doing all this stuff down here, sorting out war and what have you, that sort of befriend scheme can just keep ticking over very nicely. So what have we got to do down here? Now let's sort this smaller war out first. So this is the Alberacinian, possibly Alberacinian, claim on the Sheikdom of Terrawell. So that's just there. I mean, I admire these people here. I admire their pluck and, and their confidence, let's say. I mean, possibly, possibly this is a little bit foolish of them, but I'm, I'm going to go down the admiration route. So we're obviously the empire of covered with 72,311 people to bring to a fight. They, they've got four and a half thousand people to bring to a fight. So I don't think, I don't think they're going to win. So what do they actually, they want that. Have they claimed that? I think they have, and now they're just busy sort of sieging down other places. Okay, I mean, if we just take, if we take that, hang on, hang on, what do they own? So if we take this here, and it looks like that there, so Fraga and Albarasin, I, I apologise for the pronunciation, which I'm completely mangling into oblivion, um, those two, I think that will be the fight done. And then we have this one here. So this is the Sardinian War. Now I think Aragon are involved in that. So let's have a look. So this is the Sardinian de Uri War for the County of Bastia, which is over here. Okay, so Sardinia feel like they should have that county just there. And on their own, I don't think they've got that many people. They've got about 8,000 people. But um, yeah, they've bought in, they've bought in Tahert, wherever they might be, and they've bought in the Byzantines. We've not really had much to do with the Byzantine Empire, but there we go. I mean, he, he's got a good hat. He's got a very good hat bit jealous of the hat there um yeah okay born in the purple what does that mean he's born to prominent parents of rich life and high expectations how do how do we get these surely our kids should have this surely our kids should have born in the purple born to an emperor of a massive empire hang on a minute why can't we get born into purple things or born into orange i suppose would be more suitable um okay that's interesting well there we go right so Anyway, let's get back on track. There's war happening. Uh, yeah, so here we want to take, we want to take, I mean, yeah, they want to take that. Have they actually got it? No. So we want to make sure that remains safe, which is fine. And then who's the actual main? It's you. So just there. So if we take, if we take all of those things on that island, I think we will be okay. So what we need to do is we need to sort this smaller fight out first because that'll be done in moments. And then we need to kind of sail over here a little bit and then just siege down all those places on there. But I don't know what they're doing. I'm not entirely sure what they're up to. Okay, I think this will be fine. I think we can muddle through. Okay, so let's put our flag thing there and then let us raise all of our troops. Now, do we just want to get... Do we want to get everybody? Do we want to get... I think we want to get a hefty... Like a good chunk of people. A good chunk of people. And then we could possibly re-raise them over here. And then just sail over this little gap there. Just go over this sort of little straight. And make our way over to there. Let's do that. Although I am a little bit wary that I don't know where these guys are. They could be coming over here right now to try and kill us in the face. Let's just... Let's let this tick up. Let's get, I don't know, 15,000 people or something. Just wandering about the place. We've got the money for it. We've got the money, so it's not too much of a problem. Uh, ah, right, hang on a minute. Alicante is under siege. That's down here. Okay, so not so bothered about that. Can we see the enemy over there? No, we cannot. Uh, okay, right. Stop gathering just there. I mean, if those guys do come in with whatever it was, 50,000 people, we can just raise a load of levies and just send everybody else in. Right, you pop over to there, please. So you come over to here and siege down the county of... That one, Albarasin. So get that done. Ah, hang on, hang on. The county of Laguat. Where is where is that? That is. Oh, it's down here. Hang on a minute. Hang on, what? <laughs> when did when did we own bits of Africa? I wasn't aware we owned portions of Africa. Okay, right. I'm I'm surprised. Duke Burrell. Okay. Where, what other land do you own, Duke Burrell? I'm surprised by this. Hang on. <laughs> I didn't... 
Right, well, there we go. We've got bits of Africa, everybody. And there's a little bit there as well. Okay. I didn't know we had that. Well, there we go. I, I've learned something new and surprising. You learn something new every day. Um, right, well, they're sieging that down, which means they're not going to be up here. So this is going to be fine for now. Let's get time ticking on a little bit quicker. How long is that going to take? Absolutely no time at all. So get this done. Siege that down and boom. Ooh, that's quite a lot of people coming in just there. Right, get back over here to so get back into our land. And just here, what's that? Yeah, that's that's like 45,000 people or whatever. Right, raise lots of levies just there, please. Raise many, many levies, but really quickly. Do raise the levies far quicker than that. Because that means we're all going to get horribly killed. Because there's 43,000 people coming toward us right now. If you could raise those levies quicker, they're going to get there in 10 days. Hopefully in 10 days, that is much healthier. That is much better, thank you. Okay, that is... What have we got there? 34... So that's 50,000. Hang on, hang on. Tick that up a tiny bit more. There we go. Right, merge everybody together. I notice now they've thought better of this foolish plan. And they're sort of running away. We will chase after you. Hello. Hello, Batuta Grand Emirate. How are you? Oh, hang on. I think we're still gathering. Hang on. <laughs> Wait there. Sorry, we were still getting our people together. We're a bit of admin. We're filling in some forms. Hang on. They're going to go... There. Hang on. Now they're standing on a hill. They're standing on a mountain. If we do that, we will probably win. But yes, they are defending in a mountain. Which is not perfect. Okay, do you know what? We're going to go over there. We're going to go over this way. We're going to call your bluff. We're just going to see what you do. We're going to wander off up here. We're going to siege this place, actually. Let's see if we can end one of these wars. <laughs> we'll end this... Ooh. Attrition. Oh, because we have to go through... Oh, do you know what? We'll siege this down. We'll siege this place because that's part of the Kingdom of Aragon and they're part of this alliance here, I think. They must be. They've got to be. Um, yeah, the Queen of Aragon is part of this. So we'll just siege this down. It probably won't take very long. Yeah, 30-odd days. That's absolutely fine. Those guys stood there in their mountains. Oh, no. Oh, no. We see the Spymaster. Yeah, he's died of gout. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, okay, so we could put in Duke Edbert. He's got an intrigue of 15. He is a powerful vassal. Or we could put in... Oh my goodness me. We could put in Duke Torstein, who's got an intrigue of 32. Wow. Okay, or Kettle. Kettle, are you poorly? Kettle, you don't look very well. Oh dear. Oh crikey, yeah, Kettle is... Kettle is unwell. He is ill. Severe penalty. However, his health is fine because he's got so many other kind of good things going for him. <laughs> he's fine. He's all right. He's got a bit of a sniffle. He's absolutely fine. Um, I'm going to put this guy in. Let's put him in. It doesn't matter about our powerful vassals. Everyone likes us anyway. It doesn't really make any difference. Okay, in you go. Good spy master. Right, get this done then. Right, move time on a bit quicker. Come on. They keep sort of threatening to run off and then keep changing their mind. So... That's that done. And then we'll just wander over to there. And we'll take that. Okay, what are they doing? What are those guys doing? Befriend! Terrible misunderstandings. Oh, I'm glad it's going well. I was hoping to surprise Gustav with a great feast in his honour. Yet he decided to withdraw his attendance at the last possible moment. It seemed he thought my surprise was, in fact, part of a plot to assassinate him. It's precisely, precisely the opposite. We want to keep you alive. We want to make you the King of Sweden. Just come and have a party. Ah, oh, fine. I'll have to eat the cake myself. Um, okay. Let him think what he wants. Or perhaps an apology is in order. Gains unfortunate misunderstanding. Scheme power minus five. Oh, I don't care about scheme power. I don't care how long it takes. Not interested in that at all. They're going back out onto the sea. Okay. Right. Oh, splendid. Right, there we go. Well, that's the easy war done. So we will enforce our demands. There you go. We keep the title. He loses his claim. They pay us some money, which is quite nice. Boom. Okay. That's that sorted. So, one fight dealt with. Oh, now. Can we get down here and have a fight with them on the coast? Can we do that? How long is that going to take? 16 days. How long is it taking them to actually get out onto the sea? Oh, they're going to get out onto the sea, aren't they? Um, a claim on Trent. Um, okay, somebody's trying to claim Trent. Okay. 
That's fine. <laughs> I do that all the time. I can't really be too picky about that. I can't go, oh my goodness me. Someone's fabricated a claim, the scoundrels. Because I do that a lot. Oh, come on. Right, okay. Over to here. Over to here. And knowledge is within grasp. Okay. We've got little in common. Uh, difficult to communicate with him. However, with some effort, I could teach myself enough to carry a conversation about strategy and supply lines. He is... He's a tactician, so he'd probably like that sort of thing. Okay, a martial study. 96% chance that... Oh no, again, martial study. So we gain plus one in martial anyway. It's quite nice, given we're having a fight. And 96% uh, chance that the scheme power goes back up again. Okay, right. Hooray, it worked. And now we're having a fight with these guys. Okay, so killity kill. They're going to join in a bit late, but I think we can muddle through. Plus tens, plus twenty fours. All sorts of wonderful things. And we've had a mental break. Oh, what's happened? Oh no, Constance has died. 70, 72 stress. We were already quite high, weren't we? And I don't think there was anything we could do. I think we've done the feast and the hunt thing. Oh my goodness me. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, there's people dying in the dungeons. Possibly should maybe go and sort that out. Okay, right. Hang on a minute. Hang on. King Brew has improved. Oh, well done. Oh, that's nice. I forgot we made him a king. He's the king of Burgundy. That's nice. Right. Constance has died of heart failure. How old were you? 63. How old are we? 65. Oh, that's, that's, that's encouraging. Okay. Fine. Right. So what have we got? Oh, we've got one of the good ones. Ah, oh, we've got one of the good ones. Lately, it feels like I am constantly being distracted by lascivious... Lascivious, lascivious, uh, okay, uh, thoughts, and oh my goodness me, goodness me, erotic fantasies, my goodness me, two cups of tea instead of just one, wow. Uh, with all the hardships of everyday life, it is all too easy to lose myself in daydreams and forget about reality. These desires are clearly interfering with my life, but what should I do about them? Okay, so perhaps a new view of God will help me. We convert to whatever that religion is there. No, no, no. We don't want to convert to that religion. We've got plans for religion. Or a different kind of outlet. We gain the trait athletic. Prowess plus one and a small boost to health and stress loss plus 20%. I mean, this is a bit of a no-brainer. Or we just kind of just try and keep it all in and we gain some more stress and then we're just going to completely collapse. Um, No, let's get athletic. Let's actually have ourselves a brand new trait. There we go. We got the trait athletic, so we've lost a big chunk of stress. Now when we lose stress, we're going to lose more stress, and we get a health boost. And our prowess goes up by one, which is neither here nor there. Not bothered about that. That is completely brilliant. Okay, now we're still quite stressed out. We're still quite stressed out, but I think we can muddle through. Right, what's going on with this fight here? So I think we've won. I mean, they've got a commander with a martial advantage of nine. And here we go. I've just received the most disturbing news. My friendless rival, Duke Hereward. <laughs> oh, he's the guy we took loads of land off. Okay. Oh, he's my rival. Oh, okay. Um, it's been spreading false rumours about me to Gustav, claiming that my desire to earn his trust is nothing but a cynical attempt to exploit him. Um, I, I mean, I'm trying to make him a king. I mean, I am exploiting him to make get him, you know, part of the empire, but it's fine. Preposterous. Nobody would believe such lies. I can do this because I have uh, the diplomat trait and the august trait. Yeah, okay, that makes him spend seventy-five of his uh, of his prestige. Okay, yeah, absolutely fine. Can we finish this fight, please? Much has happened whilst that fight has been happening. Okay, there we go. My grandson Edbert has been slain during a battle of what? Segorbet. That better not be just there. That had better not be just there. It was. Hang on. Why has my grandson died? Cake? What? You weren't a knight, were you? Oh, no. Oh, no, Edbert. <laughs> oh, this is... That's that's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate indeed. Um, Yeah, Cake. Really sorry about that. I mean, Cake has many, many children, but uh, Edbert there... Edbert is, alas... Not among them anymore. I mean, she's got Christina and Swain and Radwald. All the old names coming back. But, um, yeah, that's that's not good. I'm really sorry, Keg. I'm very, very sorry. Oh, you haven't got a husband. That's a bit, that's a bit sad. Um, right. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's not ideal. But there we go. Can't change it now. I mean, he died valiantly. He died bravely. It's all good. Uh, right. Where do we want to go now? 
I mean, I'm kind of thinking we just set sail and get this. We just hop over here. We go on a boat. It's going to cost us a massive pile of money. 627 gold. Crikey's okay. A county claim, not overly interested. Duchy claim might be interested, possibly. So they're just going to slope away in defeat. That gave us 39% war score already. They're going to start maybe sieging down bits and bobs, but I'm not so bothered about that. So come on. Come on. Get out onto the sea. Go, go into boats quicker. We're still not great at the boating, but we're better than we once were. Okay. And here we go. Right. Are we actually his friend? Yes. We are his friend. We had a lovely time at a ball. <laughs> we did a bit of dancing. I let him lead. And now we our friends. Okay, right. What a good day. Hang on there, my good sir. Would you like to come to our court? So here's your friend is plus, it's plus 75 if you're his friend. Now, hang on. <laughs> hang on a minute. Hang on. As much as I like that guy, he's great. Um, This guy here is better. He is better. Um, And what was his reluctance? Minus 60. Hmm. He might... He'd be a better person. He'd be a better person to have in terms of his stats, I think. Um, although, to be fair, in, in terms of stewardship, he's actually not... He's there the same. But everything else, this guy's better. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of want this guy. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Now, he's our friend. And his kids aren't brilliant either if they're going to start taking over. His kids are not great either. I mean, 19 and a drunkard. Good grief. <laughs> he started a bit early. You're, you're actually not too bad. His second kid isn't too bad. And his daughter's seven, so that's not really... You can't judge on that. Um, do you know what? This guy... This guy's in. It's in. We'll, we'll invite him to court. We're already friends with him. Yes, absolutely. Come on over. Why don't you? Uh, we're just sorting out a bit of a fight over here. If you could hang on a second, that would be quite nice. And... My daughter-in-law has given birth to a son. That is... Oh, okay. That's that's Kettle's, Kettle's sort of uh, child. Um, okay. Teapot. Hang on, how many children does... How many children do you have? Oh my goodness me, you've got so many children. Oh, yeah, we need to check on Catherine. Is she still just wandering about? Because if she's still wandering about in the middle of nowhere, we should probably try and bring her home. Um, yeah, why don't we call her Teapot? Absolute him, Teapot, sorry. There you go, Teapot. Welcome, welcome to the world. You have no traits whatsoever. Really? Really, really? Hang on a minute. Oh, teapot. Oh, that's... That's just... <laughs> that's a little bit embarrassing there, teapot. Teapot. I mean, I'm very sorry, but you're not going to be going anywhere in this world. I do apologise, teapot. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, all your brothers and sisters, they're all... I think every single one of them is a genius. Every single one of them is a genius. I think, is he the first kid that's not got genius for ages? I've not got any traits. I'm I'm amazed. I'm I'm flabbergasted. My flabber is well and truly gasted. Okay, fine. Well, there we go. It's not like you're going to take over anyway, so it's all fine. Hello. Right, and we have ourselves another trait. Um, sorry, perk, sorry. What do we want to take? What do we actually want to take? Maybe we start now getting whole of body just to try and make us live a bit longer. So anatomical studies, court physicians have better outcomes. So let's have a go at that. Let's maybe sort of, you know, if something does happen to us, at least we might have a sort of a better chance of surviving any illnesses and what have you. I think if we can take this, I think we should be okay. Bastia is under siege. But right, hang on a minute. Hang on. We can do this. We can do this. So boom into there. 100%. There we go. Right. That war is also sorted. Ah, we got plus 25 because we've captured his heir. Okay. I'll enforce those demands. You pay me a big pile of money. It's all wonderful. There we go. And all done. All sorted. Disband the troops. And we've got about 4,000 monies. And now also, also we should have, oh my goodness me, <laughs> 14 prisoners to go and sort out. Okay, right. Fine. Let's go and go through the prisons. They've been captured for one day. This person hit three years. Oh, did I forget that we had people in the prison again? But hang on a minute. You've been in prison for three years. I apologise. I apologise. I mean, I hope it was... It's in house arrest. 
it's in house arrest. I hope it was a really, really nice house with lots of very comfortable cushions. I do apologise. Okay, there we go. People ransomed, people let out if there was no ransom money or whatever. And we made quite a nice amount of money off that. There were some very rich people there that we could ransom out. So that was quite nice. So I made a bit of money. Maybe we should go and spend some of this money. Let's go and treat some of our places. Um, okay, over here. Yeah, we've not upgraded the castle in that place. So that can go to a nice level three castle. Uh, Northampton. What can we do here? Okay, how about, I mean, I know we're not poor, but how about we get ourselves a little bit more money? Vast crop fields. It sounds wonderful. Yes, we shall have vast crop fields in Northampton. Uh, Leicester, how about we get ourselves, yeah, get ourselves some training grounds over in the barracks. Nottingham, you can have, you can have, what's the next level of the hunting grounds? Hunting reserves. Oh, that sounds fancy. Yeah, we'll have hunting reserves, please. Warwick, what can you have? You can upgrade. Actually, yeah, you can upgrade your castle to have outer baileys. Down here in Worcester. Yeah, these places are all a little bit, yeah, they're quite sort of, you know, not, not as developed as our original county, shall we say. Um, you can have a little bit wary of the money that's going to cost. 700 million. Do you know what? Do that. Do that. Get a fancy castle. And then Hereford. What can we just upgrade that's relatively cheap? 375. There we go. Lovely. Okay, right. So let the money sort of, uh, let the money kind of creep back in. This guy, he's not ill. He's not dying or anything. He's absolutely fine. He's okay. And yeah, okay. People are making claims. I can't, I can't question that. And I can't be angry about it because I did that lots. So it's fine. Let them make claims. I think I see a place that might want to join us. Hello, offer you vassalage. Would you like to come over to the Empire of Cupboard? Yes, I think you would. Um, Toulouse, would you like to come over on the off chance? Yes, you would. Oh my goodness. Right, hang on a minute. Hang on, Duke Heraweird. Ah, can we stop being rivals? Yes, absolutely. That sounds like a brilliant idea. Right, would you like to come over? Yes, you would. Okay, so you're going to become our vassal eventually, which is... Nice. Anytime soon. Yep, there we go. Oh, that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Look at that. Look at that. Right, now we need to you know, give them to the right people and make sure that, you know, the chain of command is intact and what have you. And we can vassalize this guy here as well. This place, this is uh, Duke Rodrigo of Leon, possibly. Don't know, but we'll get you on our side as well, because that seems to make sense. There we go. Are you going to come over? Splendid. Hello. Nice to meet you. Uh, what's that? That's another university. Okay, we're all right right now because they're quite expensive. They're quite expensive. We need a little bit of money. So, okay, that's fine for now. It's nice to know that we can do that if we want to. We won't do it immediately, but good to know. Now, the little notifier thing up here is being very, very useful indeed. I mean, this thing here where it says you can declare wars, 18 of them. We can declare so many wars. There's lots and lots of fighting. We've got loads of people with many claims and we can do lots of the sort of forced vassalage wars and all that kind of stuff. But we're okay right now. However, we can usurp the Emirate of Valencia. So we can just go, boop, we will have that. Thank you very much. That is now ours and it's a petty kingdom. So we need to get rid of it. We don't really want this. We want to give it away to somebody else. Um, so, I mean, do, can you join us now? Uh, you're at war. That's unfortunate. Oh, you don't want to anyway. Um, okay. I mean, it's, hang on, hang on. What was it? It was the, what is the, what was the duchy we just got? The duchy title was Valencia. I mean, it makes sense for the person that, uh, yeah, has the, the county of Valencia to have the duchy of Valencia and he's our vassal and our knight. So you can have it. Oh, you're very clever. You're very learned. Okay. Yeah. You have grant titles, the petty kingdom of Valencia. There you go. You have that. Have fun with that. Um, and now there's titles that can be created. The Empire of Francia. We can create ourselves with a bit more gold. We can create ourselves another empire. Okay. And then we can create a number of different duchies as well. Okay, right. We'll do that at some point in the near future. When we've got a bit of money. Um, however, right now, family members can get married. We probably do need to look at this because obviously you don't want to let them get too old or whatever. So they can't have kids and carry on the line and all that sort of stuff. So let's have a look here then. So Spoon, how old are you, Spoon? You're only 18. Oh, that's fine. Right. Can we find somebody to marry Spoon? There is a child over here. This guy here, Sergios Carandinos. He's eight years old right now, but he is due to inherit at some point the kingdom of 
I don't know how you say that. Well, it's a despotate, but it's a kingdom level sort of thing. So essentially the kingdom of Wallachia, Wallachia, this place here, it's in this part of the world. It's next to Hungary. It's sort of sandwiched between the uh, sort of uh, kingdom of Hungary and the Byzantine Empire. So down here. So yes, we'll do that because yeah, it's a kingdom tier. So yeah, it's a kingdom. So yeah, and we can do this. Chance of children will be medium. Hang on a minute. Hang on. How many years has he got to wait? So another another eight years. So she will be, so Spoon will be 26. Well, that's absolutely fine. That's all good. That's not too bad at all. And um, yes, the inheritable trait will hopefully be genius. But okay, we're doing this to just you know spread the influence a little bit. So there you go. So Spoon will do that for you. So you can go to that part of the world. And it's probably a lovely part of the world as well. So that's all very lovely. Right, who else is there? Cake. Okay, cake, 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 you're 45. I mean, can we just find somebody that's nice? Can we just find a lovely, kind person to marry you? I don't think you want to go and do other exciting things, do you? Who were you married to before? Remind me. Goodmund. I think he just had good stats, didn't he? He died of natural causes at the age of 57. So yeah, he had good stats. Um, okay, okay. Can we just find somebody who's nice to marry cake? Oh no, I've had an idea. I've had an idea. I have ordered this list by prowess so we can get ourselves some knights kind of married in. We can get this guy. So Baron Giselberto of Autun. Okay, it sounds wonderful. He sounds very dramatic. He doesn't look overly dramatic. He's got one of those weird kind of underpant hat things on. But there we go. He has got a prowess of 31. So yes, please. A base prowess of 16 is amazing. So if we say yes, you just there. Oh no, he's got a barony. So I think it's matrilineal. Yeah, is that going to stay with us? No, he's not going to accept. He does not want to accept that. No, botherations. Okay, right. Hang on then. Hang on. Hang on. Order it by prowess. You. You've got 28. You're diligent. You're wrathful. I don't want to marry her to someone who's wrathful. I'm really sorry. What about you? You're trusting, sadistic and humble. You're <laughs> sadistic and humble. Okay, that seems like a strange combination. 27. Is there anybody that's not horrible? You. You. You here, 27, you're compassionate, you're calm, and you're a bit stubborn. That's fine, that's fine. Um, yeah, you. Can we choose you, please? So, Gilchrist Abernethy. Oh no, hang on, no. Falkmar, you, Falkmar. So if we do matrilineal, you're not bothered either way because you're unlanded. You're at King Brew's Court. Oh, okay. Um, yes, I and mean, the chance of children is low. I'm just doing it just so we can get a knight in, really. So, okay, so let's get you in. So there you go, very nice. You're immediately a knight. You've got a very good hat. Okay, that's good. And Spoon is going to be married to the grandson of that place and will eventually, hopefully, you know, become the queen and then the children will become you know, kings and queens. That's all very good. Okay, then we've got Christina. Christina, Christina, Christina. Hang on. Who are you the... Who's the... Hang on. Who's Kettle's kid who's wandering about? Catherine. Okay, can you come back yet? Oh, yes, we can. Hang on a minute. You've got yourself... You've got yourself betrothed. Hmm. Oh, hang on a minute. I'd left the thing running. Hang on. <laughs> I didn't realise time was ticking over. I was looking at this. Another claim. It's fine. It's fine. Um. Yeah. Can we get you back to court? Um. Yes. You're you're going to come back without having to use the hook because yeah, we're the dynasty head, the house head, and all that kind of stuff. So bring you back to our court, please. Hang on a minute, Catherine. What's been going on here? You come back to court, please. Yay! Right. Welcome back. Right, this is your family. Where have you been? And what exciting things did you do on your travels? Right, what sort of things have you got? You're curious is your childhood trait. So you're gregarious, you're, you're arrogant. That's why we wanted to bring you under our control to get rid of these kind of rubbishy ones here. And you're compassionate. So you're arrogant and compassionate. Okay, <laughs> it seems interesting. Right, educate you. We will educate you, please, because we want to have you know, final say over what traits you might have. However, when do you turn 16? Oh, in not very long. So maybe we've missed that chance. And then who are you? Who are you and are you good? You're rubbish. <laughs> Can we break this betrothal, please? I don't really, I'm not really that bothered. I, yeah, break that. Away with you. That that was silly. That was, that was, yeah, that was all sort of, that was the excitement of youth sorting that out. Um, we will find you somebody good to marry at some point. However, right now, who will be on? Christina. Okay, Christina here. She's very good. 
She's very good. She's got some good stewardship going on. Um, she's at our court in Northamptonshire. Okay, right. Let's see if we can find you a lovely husband. So I think what we'll do is we'll find somebody with some really good stats for Christina because then they can remain in our court and then she can have more children with lots more good stats and traits and what have you and it shall all be lovely. So I think, now looking down here, I initially thought of Johan here. I thought, yep, yeah, there we go. Johan is intelligent, whereas Christina here is a genius. So the children will likely get one of those two. I'd like to think they'd have some level of smarts about them. And then Johan is lustful and fickle and generous. So I thought, yeah, that's okay. And then I kind of look down here at Alvice, Alvice. Alvice is a genius. So any children between Christian and Alvice will actually get the genius trait. It will be passed down because they've both got it. And then I looked at her and went, oh no, but he's sadistic. But you know what? Christina is sadistic as well. So it's probably fine and generous and a bit humble. Okay, I mean, they're interesting. You're humble and generous and sadistic. I think we... Um, I think we get you two married. We'll do it matrilineally. Chance of children is medium. Yeah, that's all fine. We'll do that. You can sort of stick around in court. That's fine. You can sort of hang around here for a bit. That's okay. And let's just get that sort of formalized. Lovely. And then we have Elfric. Oh, hang on. He's gone into a knight position. Oh, yeah, he's all right. He's not too bad. And then we've got Elfric. Okay, hang on. So you're our grandson from Saucer. Oh, oh, right. Okay, you are one of Saucer's <laughs> many, many illegitimate children going on there. Okay, in fact, they were all illegitimate. Okay, right. Saucer, what do you want to do with you? Um, I mean, you're not very good. You haven't got any of the traits and you're not very good. I mean, you're okay at intrigue. You're okay at intrigue. I mean, do we just want to find you somebody nice to marry somewhere across the world? I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of tempted to just say, go and do what you want. Go and sort out your own marriage kind of thing, because you probably can do that. But it, there's not the tick box up here to sort of, you know, make him do that. Okay, do you know what? We'll find somebody. We'll just we'll just pick a person. Here we go. This lady will do. So this is Countess Luitgard of Helgum. So Helgum is there. It's part of Norway. So if we get Elfric married to her, it will be a patrilineal marriage. And that means that eventually the people who rule Helgum here, it's only one county. It's one county, but that's better than nothing. The people that rule that will eventually be part of the dynasty of Cupboard. And that means, that, you know, we have another Cupboard somewhere in power. I mean, you know, they're not ruling kingdoms or duchies, but they're looking after a county. And that's kind of what we want. We want lots of cupboards all over the place. So, um, yeah, okay, we'll do that one. Send that proposal off, please. There we go. That's going to hopefully come back momentarily. Come on then. There we go. Yay. Oh, and we have an alliance. Okay, it's probably fine. You've got 881 people. Yay, brilliant. <laughs> I'm glad that worked. Oh, crikey. Right, Scone, you're no doubt going to want to go and, uh, and get married at some point. Right, okay. <laughs> Let's go and sort that out then. However, what have you got? Intricate web weaver. Okay, that's actually not too bad. That's not too bad at all. You're missing, you're a genius, but you're missing these other stats here. You're missing these other stats along there, but never mind, never mind. Okay, do you know what? Can we leave you for a bit? Can we leave you? We might need to, you know, keep you around a bit for some sort of, you know, political kind of marriage or whatever. We'll leave you around for a bit. We won't forget to get you married at some point but uh yeah we're just gonna we'll put on the back burner for now so let's just have a quick check back home just to see whether people are angry at us about constantly having aggressive you know sort of offensive wars it seems that people are fine about it yeah people are fine people do not care that's very good because i think now is the time to go and have a fight with sweden and i think we can get sweden under our control relatively easily hang on how sort of much army have they got? 10,000 people. Yeah, this is not going to be a problem. So, hi Sweden. Hi King Odd. I really like you. I really like you. And if you were to just join us, it would be brilliant. But alas, you're not going to do that. So, um, here we are. Gustav Stenkeling is going to uh, become the king of Sweden. I'm really sorry because you seem like a really nice chap. You've got a very nice beard. But uh, we will be declaring war on you now for the uh, Kingdom of Sweden. So there we go. Right, that's a bit of war happening. And let's click on this. Now, what have they got? Yeah, 10,000 people. So let's just, let's raise the armies and we'll leave it. Maybe we'll get sort of 20,000 just to make sure that we win any conflicts or whatever. So 
slowly starts ticking up and up and up. Oh, somebody's joined. Okay, no, they've, they've got they've got some friends coming in. That's fine. I think we can cope. I think we can probably muddle. Oh, crikey, that's a lot of people all in one go. Okay, and we'll just sort of head on over here. I mean, we should we should remember this. Surely some of the people who were involved in the last fight are back in this one again. <laughs> because we've kind of been here before. We've been here and done this. Hang on, he's logistics, man. Have we got a siege person? Yeah, you. Absolutely. You come in and do sieging, please. Come in and do sieging quicker, because that's more important. Look at the giant cannon. <laughs> that's massive. Okay. So, yeah, this is going to be done in no time at all. Let's get the clock moving a bit quicker, shall we? So, there we go. So, already up to 14%. I think we'll make a beeline straight over for their capital. Let's just go straight over in that direction. So, claim a few places round here. I don't quite know the exact route. Where are they going? Oh, they're sieging over here. They're sieging bits of Finland. Okay, how long is that going to take them? Five months, okay. <laughs> I think we'll be fine. I think we'll um, we'll get a few places on the way and then maybe go and have a fight with them as well. I mean, that's 28% already. That looks like it's actually quite well defended. That's a fort level 12. How much is their... um? What's their capital like? Their capital... Oh, crikey. Catherine... Uh, who are you? Oh, you're, you're, um, you're Kettle's first child. You're Kettle's daughter. Okay, so what have you got? Grey Eminence. Oh. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a four-star education trait for diplomacy. Oh, you're re you're quite good. For a 16-year-old, you're very good. You're a drunkard at 16. Goodness me, what did happen to you down here? <laughs> Wherever it was. Where was it? Down here somewhere. What did happen to you over in that part of the world that made you a drunkard at the age of 16? Come on. There must be a way to get rid of that. Okay, fine. Never mind. She's a drunkard. <laughs> there we go. Right. Sort out a, um, a marriage for you as well at some point. Okay. There we go. So many days left until we get this done. One thing, actually, when this is done. The servant of the horned god. What? As I open my eyes in the dark, I'm immediately overwhelmed with an ominous feeling. Is someone watching me? Are you ready to embrace the truth, teapot? I sit up, suddenly completely awake. I look around for the source of the unfamiliar man's voice, but there are only shadows. The horned god offers you his blessing. Will you accept it? Uh, with all my heart, we become a witch? Or no, we get a hundred piety. Now, this is very interesting. This is very interesting because at some point in the relatively near future, and I was just going to check Teapot's health. It's poor. It is poor. That's not overly encouraging. Um... At some point, and yeah, it's going to have to be relatively soon because he's ill, we are going to create our own religion. And when you create your own religion, you can have a thing in there about witchcraft. And at the moment, Catholicism says, boo, away with witchcraft. Witchcraft is terrible. We don't like it. Everyone who practices witchcraft is a sinner. Away with it. But I kind of think that I, I kind of want that to be a thing in our religion. I want it to be a nice thing. So I think Teapot knows that this is going to happen. In the back of his mind, he knows that he's going to create this religion and witchcraft is going to be fine. It's going to be absolutely fine. It's all going to be a lovely thing and nobody is going to complain about it. So maybe we should get ourselves a witch secret. I don't know what this does. I've no idea what this does. It might open up all sorts of fun story things. He does look a little bit old and grumpy there, <laughs> doesn't he? What's he doing? <laughs> There's false teeth falling out. Um, so... I think, yeah, this. I mean, he's content. So whether he would do that, he's diligent and he's temperate, enjoying things in moderation, but he knows he's on the way out. He knows, Teapot, that you know, his days are numbered. There are many, many more days behind him than there are in front of him. He knows this to be the case. So maybe he will just do this. And maybe it could be, like, you know, they could do, I mean, the cauldrons cauldrons of tea which is making great big cauldrons of tea that's precisely what it is i mean it's the horned god uh we'll we'll call it the tea god or something instead but yeah okay absolutely we are going to be oh hang on a minute what the witch reveals himself to me you learned of infante mundi's witch secret and various commanders are improving and all that kind of stuff which is all lovely um we've lost oh, we've lost a place over there oh that's fire yeah, that's okay great stuff right so, back up to 36%. Can we just get their capital? Because that's going to be a great big, great big chunk of war score for us. And if we get, like, you know, an heir or something as well, that's going to be even better. And Reprando has died of heart failure. Oh, bother. And 
Our path of vassals are pretty rubbish. Let's get Brew. There you go. There you go, son of ours. Come in and be a chancellor, please. That could be helpful. Right, here we go. The siege thing is falling and inspired moderation. Oh no, we don't want to take any more stress. Okay, following the death sentence of a lonely thief, I asked my grandson Arnster what he thought. He claimed he had learned a lesson about not reaching for more than one can handle. So he's currently got temperate. Temperate is stewardship and he's going down a stewardship education. This makes perfect sense to have that. Um, or we can make him just, which is stewardship plus two and learning plus one. What does he get for temperate? Temperate, he gets a health boost, though. Health boost is good, or make him cynical. No, do you know what? Keep temperate. Absolutely. We're temperate. We're okay with that. Temperate's doing quite well for us. So yeah, okay, we'll have that, please. Right, come on. Here we go. Down to here, up to 60%. Wow, that's, that's quite a lot. We need to have a fight with them at some point. Can we have a war with you guys? Oh, yeah, you're coming in here. Oh, it's fine. We'll head this way. We'll head this way, and we'll have a war with you over here somewhere, if that's okay. Oh, hang on a minute, you're kind of heading over here. It's fine. We'll come this way. Hello. Would you like a war? Oh, no, you've changed your location again. Crikey, you're fickle all over the place. Oh, my goodness me. Just stay in one place. There we go. We'll meet you down here, if we can. If you're not going to run away first. Nope, you're running away first. And Teapot is not the son of my son and their kettle. Oh, Teapot. That is why you don't have any of the traits, because your dad is actually Duke Torstein the Third of Gilland. Oh dearie me. Oh dear. What does that mean? Disputed heritage. Oh dear. Oh Teapot. It's not started great for you, has it? So yeah, you didn't pick up any of her traits. Oh my goodness me. She's melancholic. She's profligate. She's contrite. Oh, she's really good as well. Oh, you, you two. Aren't you a blooming couple? Crikey's. Okay, fine. Well, there we go. There we go. Right. Get these guys down here. Come to here. I think we can go here. I think we'll be okay having a fight. Oh, we're terrible at the fighting. We are really rubbish at the fighting. They're going to bring some more people in. We'll win the, we'll win the battle. That's fine. So, boom. There we go. The battle is won. 88%. We're sieging this place down right now. Is this going to be enough? Is that going to tip us over the 88%? 100%. That's all it took. One big fight. And then, what, a handful of counties. Okay, here we go. This chappy is going to become our vassal. And we are going to get all of these lovely things. There we go. Prince Odd. <laughs> He's got a county and stuff. Do you know what? We'll send you some money to say sorry. I'm really sorry. I apologise. I liked you. You should have just joined us. Right. Disband the troops. And there it is. We have ourselves lovely, lovely Sweden. Welcome, Sweden. Oh, it's, it's lovely to have Sweden on board. It just feels really nice. And right now, now we go and show them how to make tea. Now we go and show them how to do the tea thing. Right. Hang on a minute. Um, yeah, we can transfer you over. So that's now looking at the right person. And okay. Titles. Titles, titles. Let's get this done. Let's get the Empire of, um, of Francia done, or Francia, how we pronounce it. 600 gold. We've got enough counties for it. Gives us 500 prestige. We don't really need it, but it's just a nice thing to have. So, yay, we have ourselves... Hang on. Hang on. This isn't going to do something silly. It's not going to break away, because we hold the Empire of Cupboard title. Hang on, but it's not going to be an independent thing, is it? Hang on, hang on. Is that our primary... Your primary title is the Empire of Cupboard. And we have... Hang on a minute. I just want to check this isn't doing something incredibly stupid. We have Primogeniture. Primogeniture means under Primogeniture uh, Succession, put my teeth in, your oldest child inherits all your titles. So it does not split apart. It doesn't change around a bit. Okay. I think we're okay to create the Empire of Francia or Francia. However you pronounce that there. Let's create that title. So yes, please. Okay. We are now the Emperor of Francia. That's it. The Emperor. I failed to say Emperor as well. There we go. We're the Emperor of another place. Okay, this is, this is fascinating. Hang on. We can create the Empire of Scandinavia as well. Oh my goodness me. Ah, and that might let us get Denmark in. 
And that means we would have all of Scandinavia. Oh, yeah. Okay. Why the heck not? There we go. Right. Now we're the Emperor of Scandinavia as well. <laughs> wow. This is brilliant. We've got some prisoners we need to sort out as well. Let's not put people in prison. That's our family. And we can create some, some uh, duchies as well. Crikeys. Okay. Right. First things first. Let's go and let the prisoners out. And then we'll go and create these duchies. Because they're just going to be relatively sort of formal things. I don't even know where some of these places are. But we'll go and create those. And just, you know, give them out to people that kind of live in that area or whatever. Down here, we have been able to give the Duchy of Emilia to Duchess Eva here. And because she owns the capital of that particular duchy, it means we can build a duchy building. So why don't we get tax offices? Because that will feed into us. This place here will generate 10% more tax. And eventually, in the long run, you know, in a very sort of convoluted way, reporting up and up and up, that will come through to us. I mean, it might be a tiny, tiny bit of money, but it's better than no money at all. So, OK, there you go. Have some tax offices. Very exciting. And it's the same situation over here in the Duchy of Pojanma, which we have just created. So there we go. So this duchy here is uh, currently owned by the Duke here, Duke Aslak, and he also owns the county capital. So therefore, we can build ourselves a tax office in there as well. That leaves us with not very much money at the moment. We don't have very much in the way of cash. We do need to pay this guy a bit of money. Can we give him a gift right now? 150 money. This would leave us very poor, but it would mean that he is likely to stop being in this liberty faction. Okay, there we go. We'll do that. That's the poorest we've been for an awfully long time. And now we're not quite so poor again. It's lovely getting 173.6 money per month. That is wonderful to behold. And we have discovered court officials. I don't know if there's much left for us to discover. Is there anything left for us to learn about? I do not think there is. We have learnt all of the things. I mean, that's amazing, really. Anglo-Saxons have discovered everything in the game in the year 1337. I mean, there is an end point. There is an end point in the game. It does end at some point, but I don't think it's for a little while yet. And we've learnt everything. We've got nothing else that we can learn other than by going and taking other places that are sort of your know, regional kind of things we might learn. But then, yeah, we don't have access to these yet. There's all sorts of very exciting things we could learn, but um, but yeah, we just haven't got access to those. But that, that is amazing. That is amazing. Well done, Anglo-Saxons. And I see I've been, for ages I've been saying they're the best ones. They're the best one. Everyone should go over to Anglo-Saxon. They're brilliant. But uh, now it's been proven. Now it's been absolutely proven. Hello, we're the Anglo-Saxons and we've learned everything that there is to learn in the world right now. However, King Even, you do need to go and start promoting culture because even though we've just you know, proven that Anglo-Saxons are the cleverest and they've unlocked every single technology that there is that they can get their hands on right now, we still want everybody to be Anglo-Saxon. We want everybody to be the superior culture. So um, yeah, work on Sussex down here, please. I also like the fact that you're called King Even. I'd love it if we had odd yeah we did have an odd if we had king odd and king even on the court that would be <laughs> that would be wonderful but uh but no i don't think it's going to happen right now but there we go right so we're working on that down in sussex which is wonderful also we are still a bit stressed out how about we go on a hunt let's go on a bit of a hunt here we go so 63 stress lost oh that's that's more because we're athletic okay that's wonderful that is a huge chunk of stress right we're down to 63 which is nice. So we're on stress level zero. Now let's see what happens with this thing. Somebody in the comments on the previous video did say, do you remember the white boar? I don't really know what happened to the white boar storyline. It sort of just petered out. It just sort of went away and nothing really happened with it again, which is a bit of a shame. Okay, you would think it's a creature of myth, perhaps a god disguised in animal form, the largest stag I have ever seen. Okay, so we've chased the stag around. It's massive. We can get money for it. We can give it to King Eberhard, but he likes us anyway, or we can send it to the Pope. Okay, I mean, I don't really care about the Pope. And when we create our own religion, the Pope is going to be quite cross with us anyway. So how about we just get some money for it? Yay, 300 monies for a great big dead animal -y thing. Wonderful. And that's it. It's all done. The hunt is finished. We return home reinvigorated. All very wonderful indeed. Sometimes they're a bit more eventful. Sometimes many things happen, but not that time. And we can still found a university. Yeah, it was over there somewhere, wasn't it? I'm not that bothered right now. We have some other universities, so it's fine. Right, here we go. Here we go. Answer tell. My grandson answer tell hovers in limbo between childhood and adulthood. I have taught him enough to understand the truth, and he is still young enough to have an open mind. If I want to induct him into the service of the horned god, it is now or never. Okay, so 
do I basically turn my grandson into a witch? Which at some point in the future, I would imagine in the next part, everybody, I think we're going to create our own religion, which is going to be absolutely fine with witches. So I think we should do this. He deserves to know his power. What happens with this, though? What happens? Right, Kettle, don't get angry at me, Kettle, but I'm going to turn your son, your, your, your son here, the future, as it stands right now, the future Emperor of Cupboard. I'm going to turn him into a witch, but it's fine. Cauldron's full of tea and everything, and it worked. Antetel is convinced I've just <laughs> converted my 15-year-old grandson to uh, to be a witch. Wonderful. There we go. And what do we have here? Stress gained a bit down. Restraint or wash your hands. Reduced chance of contracting illnesses. Yeah, that seems like quite a sensible thing to have. We will have that, please. Thank you very much. So to finish things off, why don't we just treat ourselves to some more men at arms? Let's just boost what we've got right now, because I think we've got a little bit of money left and we are earning quite a lot of money per month. So let's just get a little bit of an increase to our, you know, our decent regiments, our elite troops here. So let's spend 117 money on getting an extra 100 Huskars. We'll have some more crossbowmen. We will have some more light horsemen. Can we get any more cannons? No, we can't, unfortunately. Never mind. Um, pikemen. Let's get two lots of pikemen. How much are the um, armoured horsemen? They are quite expensive, but we are earning massive piles of money. So, OK, we'll have some more armoured horsemen. And that's 90 for armoured footmen. And that's 45 for light footmen. Do you know what? Let's let's get a big, big load of extra uh, light footmen there. That will do the job very nicely. And that will start ticking up. And there we go. I mean, we've got 84,144 soldiers. I mean, that will go up as well. Because obviously these are going to start increasing. So we're going to have about 85,000 soldiers, which is just a bit silly. And I mean, most of them are levies. Most of them are levies, but a lot of them. A lot of them are not. A lot of them are proper actual trained troops with you know, real equipment, not just peasants with pointy sticks and, you know, a bit of a bad attitude. They've got actual proper sort of trained people. Let's just wait for those armoured footmen to tick up to 400. Anytime you like, armoured footmen. Come on, come on. Train those last 20. Train the last 20, please. How long does it take? There we go. I think that's it. I think that is it. So even with all them done, we're still earning 173.2. <laughs> I mean, it'll be different when we raise them, but we just save a big pile of money. Okay, wonderful. And there we go. So what I think we'll do is we will finish up for now. So we've added Sweden, which is very, very good. We sorted those little wars out down here. We've kind of expanded over here a little bit. We have discovered that we have some territory over here in Africa, which is a bit of a surprise. I mean, it's a nice surprise. It's very welcome. Um, the Holy Roman Empire are still there. They're still there. They are still relatively strong got 20,000 troops to their name. So we need to do a little bit more work on the Holy Roman Empire as well to make them go away. And of course, we're now an, an emperor, a thrice emperor. We are now thrice an emperor because we are the emperor of cupboard, which is obviously the, the best of all the empires. But we're also the emperor of Francia or Francia and the emperor of Scandinavia as well, which is all very splendid and very exciting. So yeah, things are looking, things are looking very good. Things are looking very, very good. But, but Teapot is getting old. He is 68 years old now. His health is poor. He's got all these wonderful things going for him. He's got all these things. But, you know, he's not going to live forever. He's got enough piety. And I think, you know, loads left over as well to create his own religion. So he is going to ponder this. He's going to you know, have a little think about it. And next time out, we are going to do it. We're going to create our own religion. I don't think there's that many people that we can go to now and say, hello, would you like to, um, yeah, would you like to come over to our side and join us? Would you like to become our vassal and all that kind of stuff? I don't think there's that many people left now. So that's okay. Because at the, you know, the moment we can do it, most people are Catholic and we can say, hey, would you like to join us? And they go, you're Catholic, we're Catholic. Absolutely, we're on board. When we change our religion, people are not going to do that. People are going to say, no, we're not going to join you. But also, He's not going to be here forever. Teapot is not going to be here forever. So yeah, we're not going to have the advantages of all of the diplomacy powers that he has. So it makes sense next time 
to create our own wonderful religion. I mean, I think we all know what it's going to be based upon, but we shall do all that kind of stuff next time out. And it shall be very, very exciting indeed to see how that goes. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, then please do leave a like. That would be most splendid indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Crusader Kings 3. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. These people are eating the tables. They're just devouring the tables. They're so hungry. There's no atmosphere at all. Were well, you sat in the car park? <laughs> are you sure you came to the right place? Mein Knien stan in Brand. <laughs> if you want to order meatballs made of snails, you need to be really certain about this.